Some of you don't look like you're totally awake. I don't know, did any of you watch any of the um, Believers Convention in, um, where is it, uh, Texas, I think? Anybody? No. No, wow. It was something else. That's the one yet. It's on YouTube, but boy, it's just powerful. powerful. But um, he said something that was, uh, uh, one of the preachers said, uh, you will receive in a, in a message that's being preached, you will receive according to how you respond. Now, I know in some churches it's just, um, it's just uh, you know, tradition, you might say, or just the way they do things, you know, that uh, everybody shouts and says amen and so on and so forth. But what I'm saying is that our response to what you're hearing is going to determine, you know, the word amen, for instance, it means so be it. In other words, you hear something and then you say, so be it for me in my life. Amen. Yes. It matters. Yes, it, does. it matters how you respond to what you hear. It's not just hearing it. So many times we just hear stuff. You just, you know, it just goes in one ear and out the other. You know, we're sort of like teenagers. So you're not responding. You're not responding. Come on now. Come on. Anyway, let me give you these real quick before you fall asleep on me. So what do people in China call their good plates? They're good plates. <laughs> Anybody watching online? <laughs> Should I continue? What, what do you call a male ladybug? Good question. I'll just let you ponder. <laughs> All right, here's another one. What hair color do they put on a driver's license of a bald man? Anybody want to answer that? <laughs> it's my birth color. It's what it is. Anyway. You, what? I got one, and it's kind of dangerous because it's talking about uh, two women that were blondes. Oh, I like that one. And there were two blondes, and they were going to Disney, and they were all excited. And they were driving there, and they saw a sign, and it says, Disney left. They started crying and turned around and went back home. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> All right, just a couple more. If they squeeze olives to get olive oil, how do they get baby oil? Oh, no. <laughs> you ever think about this one? If flying is so safe, why do they call the airport terminal? <laughs> okay. Last one, last one, last one. Okay. A new, a new teacher was trying to make use of her psychology courses. She started her class by saying, everyone who thinks they're stupid, stand up. After a few seconds, little Johnny stood up. And the teacher said, do you think you're stupid, Johnny? Johnny replied, no, ma'am, but I hate to see you standing there all by yourself. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Amen. All right, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that you're changing and renewing our minds so that we're not confused people in this hour of much confusion. We know who you are. We know who we are. And we know what we're called to do in Jesus' name. Amen. We sang that song again. You know, I can't get away from this song, Be Magnified. It just struck me the first time that uh, Rob uh, sang it here played it here in the band, but um, the words just, it, they, were, they were like prophetic words. Yeah. I think to the church, it, it certainly, you know, touched me, but, but I, I believe it's a word to the church as well, 
because, you know, you can get churchy after a while. You can get religious. You can just do stuff because you do stuff, you know. And uh, and we, we miss the reality of really who God is. And I, I titled this message, you know, your God is too small. Your God is too small. When you look around you and you look at uh, the, the how, how things are and how things are in, in the world, how things are, you know, around you or your, your family or whatever, uh, the church, it's like, is, is God really as big as, as he says he is? That somewhere, you know, somehow we kind of know that he is. You know, the, the uh, last week when we were talking about, and I, I played that song uh, for you, When God Ran. And, and before that, you know, in the song, he's, he's singing about uh, mighty God, omnipotent father, you know, mighty conqueror. All those things he talks about how great God is. And yet this God ran to him when he needed him. Amen. And so, you know, when, we, we, when I first heard the, the song, you know, it's like uh, the first uh, words are, I have made you too small in my eyes. And sadly, I think that's where the church is. He's too small. Yeah, he could take care of the little things, you know, this and that and something else. And, but, you know, to, you know, and again, as I've said many times, and some of you don't like it, but that's okay. Um, that uh, we have more faith in a rapture taking place any minute than in the power of God being able to change the world. We, we, don't, we don't have enough faith. God is not big enough. We're not good enough. We're not big enough to see the world change. So what else is there to do? Get out of town, man. It's getting bad. You know, it's like a flood's coming, you know, of the worst kind. And so what do we do? We escape. We get out. Now, I know some of you want to see Jesus right away, but, you know, you know, it's like that um, um, it was in a, a church bulletin, you know, and it said, um, just remember this. Uh, God is not going to call you on your cell phone. If you want to talk to him, you know, find a quiet place somewhere. If you want to see him, text while you drive. <laughs> it was in a church bulletin. <laughs> but anyway. But, you know, we honestly, honestly, we think God is just too small. He just can't do the things he used to do. When we look at the Old Testament, we see the amazing things. You know, can you, I mean, you know, I know you've seen it on TV probably, but the parting of the Red Sea, you know, I mean, the water, you know, becoming a wall on either side and they walk through on dry ground. This is just amazing stuff, let alone creating the universe. And everything that's in it. I mean, wow, wow, and wow. But we make God too small in our eyes. He's just too small. Yeah. He, he's just not big enough to do, you know, really big things anymore. He used to do them in the Old Testament, but he doesn't do them anymore. So when I heard the first words of that song, I have made you too small in my eyes. I think that's a lot of the church. Too small. Our God is too small. And she goes on to say in writing the song, Lord, forgive me. I believed in a lie. And, and when we talk about believing a lie, there's so many lies we believe. Lies about God, lies about ourselves, lies about the future, lies about the past. Again, you know, back to what Mike was writing, you know, about how deluded that people are about, you know, information that is, I mean, it's like, whatever happened to science, you know? Remember they used to say, believe the science? And, and what, 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 what science? Right. What, what, what science are you talking about? You know, I mean, there's a big uproar in the Olympics right now because there was a, a guy that, that uh, you know, is, is tested as, a, as a, a man, and yet he says he's a woman, and he starts beating on this girl boxer and, and, you know, she quits because she said, I ain't never been hit this hard. I'm out of here. Yeah. I saw on the news, he just beat up another lady. I mean, this is crazy stuff that's going on. But it's like, you know, well, believe the science. Believe the science. What's the science? You know, X chromosomes, right. XY chromosome. Real simple to tell, you know, who's who. 
But this is how insane things are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, I know, but we, we, we I don't want to get I don't want to get started. <laughs> but but again, this is the delusion that so many people today and, and they believe it with all of their hearts. I mean, it's like you got to fight them. You know, well, you will be in a fight if you try to argue with them or say, no, 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 no. That's not you know, that's not the science. We don't care about science anymore. You know, it's, it's like if somebody has a thought. Let's say a man has a thought that um, he now wants to be a woman. Imagine that, just a thought. You can change from a man to a woman, a thought. A thought, or vice versa, a thought. A thought that says, I think I like women more than I like men. But just a thought, that you decide your destiny by a thought. Man, I'm going the wrong direction here right now. <clears throat> <laughs> right, so it's truth. Where's the truth? So it says, you made, you, I made you too small in my eyes. Forgive me. I believed in a lie that you were unable to help me. Now, Lord, I see my wrong. So there's repentance. In other words, we, we've got to begin to see God the way he really is. Psalm 34, and verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord. I mean, you know, God is not, you know, uh, weak in the sense that he needs somebody to build him up. You know, make him feel better than, than he is or bigger than he is. How I many you know he's big? I said he's big. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I mean, he just, he can hold the whole universe in his hand. I mean, you can't even fathom that. You can't even, you know, wrap your brain around it as big as your brain is. Magnify the Lord. The New Living says, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. What, is it, what does it mean to magnify? I mean, you know, we, he can't get any bigger, but he can get bigger in our eyes. And that's what the lady was, was writing and singing about. To get greater in our eyes, to magnify him means to make him large in our lives. Can he do great things? Can he do miracles? Can he do amazing things? Can he, he turn things right side up that are upside down? Can he do any of that? Can he save America? Can revival break out across the universe? Well, not the universe, but, but across the earth. Maybe the universe, I don't know. Martians getting saved, I don't know, but... How do we magnify him? Is he, is he big in your life? And you could, you could find out easily how big he is in your life by how you live your life. Just like, you know, giving time, right? Or what you do on a regular basis as far as giving. When God is big, you don't worry about money. When God is big in your life, when he's magnified in your life, the God that is the source of everything. The great I am. And he's our father, right? And yet, we don't trust him with a couple dollars. Moving right along. <clears throat> you know, objects look small from far away, right? But when you magnify them, they become larger and larger and larger. You know, the Bible says the closer you get to him, the bigger he gets. Yes. He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind, whose eyes are stayed on him. When you see him in your spiritual eyes, yes. how big he is, how great he is, how marvelous he is. Wow. Changes everything. Everything. But you've got to get close. The closer you get, the bigger he gets. The more he's magnified in your eyes. Man. Exalting God, his greatness, his importance in our lives. We amplify, we, we increase who he is. We expand uh, our, our thinking into, you know, understanding how great our God is. 
Psalmist said, my soul magnifies the Lord. It means through me, through you, through us. Others begin to see. You know, is God magnified enough in your life that people see it? That people see him in you? Come on, somebody. Is he magnified? I mean, do people really notice? Or do they think you're just religious because you go to church? Are you with me? But do they see him? If you're magnifying him in you and through you, they're going to see him and his greatness. Amen. It's like a, a testimony. You know, when, you're, when you witness to somebody, and you give a testimony to somebody. You know, it's like uh, Mike and Missy, you know, they, they did that uh, with the 700 Club, you know, where they shared their testimony of how God, uh, you know, gave them children when, you know, it looked like they could never have children. You know, and apparently at some point they said, okay, I think that's, a, <laughs> I don't know, but, but uh, and now, you know, look at the children they got, you know, it's amazing. That's magnifying God, testifying that it wasn't us, it wasn't, you know, science, it wasn't the pills we took, it wasn't any of those things, it was God answering our prayer and our desire to give us a family. Yeah. Magnifying him. When's the last time you testified of God doing something great in your life? Magnifying him to other people so they can see how good God is. Like I was saying last week, you know, it's not, you know, evangelism. Sometimes we think, you know, repent of your sins, repent of your sins. You know, you want to come to Jesus, repent of your sins. No. All you need to do is come to Jesus. Come. He'll take care of that problem. Amen. Yes. When you're born again, you become a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. You become the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. That's all you need. Yeah. When's the last time you witnessed to somebody? When's the last time you shared a testimony with somebody about how good God is and what God did? Making him greater in your thoughts, your affections, your memories, in your expectations. Just agreeing with everybody else. You know, we, we like to be agreeable people. That's why a lot of people don't spend much time on social media because they want people to agree with them. And there are a lot of people that won't agree with you. But so we're afraid to really share sometimes, whether it's in public or social media or whatever the case, we're afraid to share or magnify him because we don't want opposition. I mean, if there's anybody that had opposition, it was Jesus. But he magnified the Lord no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, where he was, no matter who he was talking to. It just didn't matter. Yeah. You remember the time when uh, he had thousands of people that he was preaching to? I mean, he had a mega church. I mean, mega church. Woo! And it doesn't mean it was a Trump church, by the way. It was a mega church. <laughs> anyway, thousands of people he's preaching to. And then, you know, he, he said something that didn't go over real big. And they all walked away. But he didn't back off and say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let me try to explain what I meant by that. I really didn't mean, you know, no, he didn't do that. didn't do that. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, you guys going? Yeah. He wasn't afraid yeah. to speak truth. And if there's any generation that needs truth, it's this one more than ever before. You know, when you read of the history of the great revivals that happened in America and England and all those places, do you know this? We, we don't sometimes realize it, but they had a biblical knowledge already. If you know any of the history of America, you know, the Bible was taught in school. So to get people to respond to uh, preaching a message about Jesus, they already had a basis for the gospel. Yeah. Are you with me? Right. Nowadays, so many people have no basis, no you know, uh, uh, foundation at all in, in truth or in the word of God. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. You know, we kicked the Bible out of school. One place, uh, is it Louisiana, I think it was, they, they, they put uh, uh, the Bible back in school, or the Ten Commandments, I'm sorry. They put the Ten Commandments back in the schools. 
and, and the ACLU and people are fighting it over, you know, we can't, we can't have God stuff in the school. But it used to be normal. They would learn from the Bible. And there's so many people that have no absolute zero knowledge of God in their life. And it's up to us to be the ones that magnify him. We magnify God, not by making him bigger than he truly is, but by making him greater. Greater in us first. Magnify him by having higher, larger, truer thoughts of him. Magnify him by praising him, telling others about his greatness so they can have bigger thoughts about him too. Yes. Mary, for instance, magnified him out of joy and gladness. How joyful are you that God is in your life? Or how miserable are you not knowing how big or actually how small he really is in your life? So quiet in this Presbyterian church. The psalmist in Psalm 64, we won't go there, 69, magnified him out of deep need and affliction. They both speak of deliverance and answered prayer and expectation. You know, how much do you magnify God when things aren't going the way that you want them to or thought they would? Do you magnify him then? When you have a loss in your life, can you still magnify God? I remember listening to Bill Johnson talk about uh, when his, his wife passed away. Now, you've got to figure that's a difficult, difficult thing yeah. for a, a man at the church. They've seen countless miracles, cancer, so on and so forth around the world. Thousands of people, when his wife was sick, thousands of people were praying for her healing. Thousands. It was more than 10,000, the last number I heard, around the world praying for her. People came, flew in, and prayed for her. Yet she died. You know how difficult, you can't really imagine, but you can sort of, how he must have felt. How his family must have felt. We've seen all these healings and yet a lady that was an intercessor that served God with all her heart and she dies. You can ask all those questions. But when he tells the story, the family was surrounding the bed when she took her last breath. And the first thing they did was lift their hands yes. and magnify God and thank him. Yeah. Thank him. Amen. Keith Moore, uh, last night, I think it was yesterday afternoon, Keith Moore, a great preacher. Mm -hmm. He was talking about his father dying. And uh, his father, you know, was afraid to fly in airplanes. And, and so he took him one time and he was just, you know, forget this. But then later on... Um, what? He's a pilot, right. So he has an airplane. And uh, so anyway, his, his dad said to him, um, he's like 68 years old. He said, I, I think I want to fly with you to wherever he was going. And, you know, we could spend time, you know, go to the beach and stuff like that. And you're going to go preach. And, and he said, okay, okay, you know, great. And so his mom and dad, he got in the airplane it was, it's a small airplane. He's, uh, there's only uh, one seat for the pilot up front and then two seats behind. And so they take off and they're flying to the destination. And he looks back and he sees his dad back there smiling. And, uh, and then a few minutes later, he looks back and his dad was slumped over in the seat. And he says to his mom, you know, is, is dad all right? And she said... He's gone. He died. And there's nothing that Keith could do. He's flying an airplane. There's no way he could, you know, give CPR or whatever. And he had to fly for a length of time to get to an airport and then deal with, you know, a strange place where they were in and, and taking care of the body and all those things. And he loved his dad. His dad was like his hero and so forth. And 
He was really, really hurting beyond that, because of that. And a lot of grief. But then he, <laughs> God began to touch him and he began to thank him. And God spoke to him and he said, listen, how many children grow up without a father and without a father as good as your father was? You have much to be thankful for. Anyway, he tells a whole long story of how he actually went to heaven, saw his dad and so forth. But, but what do you do when things like that happen? When you lose, when, when hurt is all around, when grief is trying to just devour you, you give thanks. You magnify God. You don't have all the answers you never will. We don't know why this happened, why someone died, why this, why that. It doesn't really matter at this point in time. What matters is where is your heart with him now? Yes. You can either magnify him and thank him in the midst of sadness and sorrow and grief. Or you can get bent out of shape. Hurt to the core and stay hurt sometimes the rest of your life. <sighs> Pastor, thank you for that exciting message. I really appreciate it. It's really. It's so easy to magnify all the cares of our life. All of our needs, our weaknesses, our duties. We get discouraged, distracted, defeated. But when we magnify him, when we magnify him. I like the story I told you last week about, you know, we're, we're under all this financial pressure. And, uh, you know, and I'm driving to work early in the morning. And, and that song came on when God ran. And, and when I lifted my hand, you know, and I just took hold of his hand. It didn't matter anymore. What was I doing? I was magnifying him. And he was running to me. Yes. And he'll always run to you when you need him. Amen. Say amen. amen. He has a strength. He'll provide us in our weakness. There's an old song we used to sing. I will magnify the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Remember that one? Yes. <laughs> so shall I be saved from my enemies. I mean, there are a lot of enemies that we deal with in life. A lot of enemies. Daily, they're enemies. <laughs> but we have a choice to magnify the Lord or give in to the pain, the sorrow, the hurt. She goes on in the song, Heal My Heart. Show yourself strong. And in my eyes and in my song, yes. be magnified. Amen. Be magnified. Yeah. Do you ever feel like, you know, when things aren't going good? At, I mean, you know, you just, you just want to turn on some headbanging music or something. <laughs> something just to get your upset out. <laughs> I know you never did that, but. But instead, you know, we should turn to magnify him, worship him with my eyes and with my song. See, we don't realize how magnificent, how powerful God is. He's just too small in our eyes. Too small in our eyes. We see, we see the works of God in the Old Testament, like I said about the Red Sea and, 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 and the plagues and all these kinds of things that he did in the Old Testament. He was God, but listen, he was, he was sovereign God in the Old Testament. I know we've talked about it before, and I ain't got time to go into it, but things changed in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, he did all these amazing, amazing miracles. Am I right about it? I mean, sometimes, you know, the enemies were going to destroy uh, Israel and, and, you know, and, and they all just died. <laughs> you know, they all just disappeared and, or, or they fought one another and killed each other off, you know, and never. Yeah, I mean, just a crazy, amazing miracle things that happened. Yes. 
And, and I think one of the problems is that we don't see the God of the Old Testament anymore. We see Jesus. Uh, this might offend some of you, but I'll take the chance. We look to Jesus, and he did some amazing things, amen? But he didn't do anything compared to what God has done. Now, we know he was God in the flesh. But the Bible says in Hebrews, he, I'm sorry, in Philippians, he laid aside his deity. In other words, he walked as a God-man. He walked as a human being on there. Let me just read it to you because some of you are looking at me funny. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6, it says, though he was God. And in, first, in verse 5, it says, you, you got to have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God. Everybody say, he was God. He was God from the beginning. In the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, John says. He was God. But he laid aside. It says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up. Are you listening? Gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. He was a man. <laughs> he didn't do the things that God Almighty did. Now we know the Trinity and so on and so forth. We ain't got time to go into it. I'm just saying, we see Jesus and we see, you know, we, miracles. He walked on water, you know, and raised people from the dead and fed the 5,000 and, and, and all that. And they were all amazing miracles. Right? Yes. But we don't see how big God is the God that created the entire universe. You know, you don't have to look any farther than the human body to see the miraculous design and working of an amazing God and how he created the human body. In fact, you could take parts of the body, like the eye or the ear or just different things parts of the body and when you really begin to dissect how amazing those parts are yes. he's almighty God you know and we think maybe you know walking on water would be wow cool I think there's a, uh, one ministry where they actually practice walking on water. <laughs> they, just, they got a swimming pool, you know, and they get all prayed up. I guess they walk. Ah, it didn't work that time. But anyway, you know, they're working on it. Okay. But honestly, we see Jesus and we see what he did. But now he's saying to us, you got to see God for who he really is. If you think the things that I did were amazing, what we did when we created the entire universe and the, and the universe is still expanding, they say. They had no idea. I don't know if you've ever done this before I even knew Jesus. I would look up to the sky and I would, I would go, wow, where does it end? You know, we, we live in a box, you know, we, we, everything is like boxed, you know, we're, we're boxed in planet Earth and, and, and so forth. It's just like, yeah, we, we can touch things, you know, and, and the Earth is flat, you know, and all that stuff. But anyway, just kidding. But, you know, we see things kind of in a, in a small package. We don't realize how huge, how amazing. The God that we serve and what he has done and what he will do. He's going to transform the entire earth, the entire universe probably, I guess, you know, with the plan. I don't know totally what's going to happen, but it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. I mean, it's wow, wow, and wow. Yes. That's the God we serve. That's the God we need to magnify. So when we see, you know, what Jesus did, but then he said this. He said, now 
I give authority to you. Hello? I give authority to you now to take what I have given you and change the world. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's right. Greater works. We, we, we have a hard time with the first works, let alone the greater works. But they're there. And we need to decide that my God is bigger than I've been thinking. Again, back to the song, the first part of that song. Where, he, where she says this. Where am I at? I have made you too small in my eyes. Forgive me. Is God big enough to pay your mortgage? Is God big enough to get you out of debt? Is God big enough? Well, I know he'll help me, but can he do amazing things anymore? Is, is he the almighty God anymore in my life? Well, I don't know, I've been defeated here and there and this didn't happen and that, you know, and whatever. And, you know, I mean, I used to believe he was really awesome, but, you know, I've had experiences and disappointments and I just question. And that's where she says in the next verse, I believed a lie. I believed a lie. That he's not as big as we used to think. He's not as great as we used to think. He's not as amazing and, and miraculous and almighty as we used to think. And that's what needs to change in us, in the church. That he's greater than we ever imagined. And we need to magnify him in the midst of what seems like everything going downhill. We need to magnify him. Yeah, well, he's still on the throne and he's still calling the shots and things are going to be transformed if we'll just do what he says and honor him for who he really is. And everybody said, amen. amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I have believed a lie. You were unable to help me. But now, oh, Lord, I see my wrong. In my eyes and with my song, be magnified. Oh, Lord, be magnified. Sing it that part, would you? Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. There is nothing you can't do. O oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Be magnified. Father, I thank you. Thank you right now, God. You know every heart in this place or those watching. You know every need that they have. You know everything that is facing them right now, God. And Lord, you are bigger than all those things. And you still do miracles, amazing miracles. I pray right now, God, that you would just uh, 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 awaken your people to believe that you are the great and mighty God in their lives. And whatever needs to change, whatever miracle is needed, healing miracles, financial miracles, family miracles, whatever they are, Lord, that we rise up and believe that you are the God that still does the impossible. And you said, even with us, nothing shall be impossible. So, Lord, we honor and, and magnify the impossible, uh, the God of the impossible today. And we say, do the impossible with us. Do the impossible with this nation. The impossible with this world right now. Lord, show yourself strong as we see you as strong as we magnify you as the mighty God almighty God 
Lord, that you will do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask according to the power that's in us that magnifies you. Father, thank you right now. Thank you right now, God. Every, every household, every person here, God, whatever's on their mind right now that's needed, what miracle is needed, what healing is needed, God, right now, right now, right now, show yourself strong, we pray. We magnify you as the miracle-working God that nothing is impossible. So, Father, we receive. We receive what seems to be impossible in this church, in your people. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great magnifying week. Amen.